Did you know that it's possible that Earth's moon isn't the only one orbiting the Earth? Well, Hungarian astronomers and physicists believe they have finally proven the presence of two Earth-orbiting moons made entirely of dust after more than 50 years of conjecture and disagreement. But why did it take so long to discover the other two moons? And how will this discovery affect future space research? Stay tuned! Well, scientists have speculated for decades that Earth could have many moons. It was hypothesized that the moons could be found in five stable locations in deep space. According to a team of Hungarian astronomers, the Earth has three natural moons, not one as previously thought. One millimeter-sized dust particles were found to make up the new moon's total composition, according to a study published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. The birth and growth of moons and planets are made possible in large part by dust, one of the most abundant elements in the universe. There is a minor quantity of interstellar dust in the solar system, but it is mostly formed of debris from the proto-solar system, as well as trash from the dynamic evolution of the solar system. Planet's orbital cleaning action has reduced the amount of protoplanetary disk material present around the planets in the current era. As a result, the Earth-Moon system's triangular libration spots are rich in pure cosmic dust. This discovery was made using observations of starlight absorption and reddening in the galactic disk by Trumpler in 1930. The Kordyluski dust clouds KDCs, were named after Polish physicist Kazimierz Kordyluski, who first saw the moons in 1961. Astronomers have questioned the reality of these objects for the past 60 years, and there aren't many reliable models or simulations available. To investigate the dispersed light from the moon's dust particles, Horvath and his team utilize special filters on their cameras that polarize incoming light. By setting up the telescopes to scan for polarized light reflected off of the clouds, researchers were able to more easily identify the clouds. Researchers were then able to rule out other probable sources of polarized light after observing patterns that stretch beyond the field of view of the telescope lens. The researchers were able to determine that the KDCs cover an area of space measuring 100,000 kilometers by 70,000 kilometers using the data they gathered. The researchers were able to determine that the KDCs cover an area of space measuring 100,000 kilometers by 70,000 kilometers using the data they gathered. This equals 30 by 20 lunar disks. So how did we just learn about this and not ages ago? Well, there is a lot of dust in space, which makes it difficult to discern them. Despite the fact that Kordeluski observed them in 1961, other astronomers have examined this and offered conflicting results over the years. Since the Kordeluski clouds are extremely difficult to discover while being as close to Earth as the Moon, many astronomers were reluctant to join the hunt. Because they are located at a distance of 400,000 kilometers from Earth, it was difficult to view and analyze them in the first place because of this. It's also quite difficult to see clouds in such a bright sky, according to co-author Gabor Horvath of Itovis Lorand University. He added that it is quite difficult to discern the Kordyluski clouds against the galactic light, starlight, zodiacal light, and sky glow. And you might be asking, how are the new moons different from the moon that we regularly see? A rise and decrease in sea levels, known as tidal currents, are caused by the moon's gravitational pull on the Earth. Lakes, the atmosphere, and the Earth's crust all experience tides, although to a far lesser amount. Additionally, the Earth's rotation is slow due to a phenomenon known as tidal breaking, which lengthens our day by 2.3 milliseconds every 100 years. To put it another way, the moon takes in the energy that Earth loses, which causes it to draw a little closer to us each year by about one and a half inches. Right now, we can only rely on theoretical studies of the dynamics used by the researchers. But on the KDC dynamics theory, the origin and distribution of the KDCs is the major focus. So for now, there is a scarcity of research available on their effect on Earth. Even though the dust clouds are centuries old, the particles that make them up are constantly changing and being replaced. They ingest dust from a variety of sources, including the debris of planets, comets, meteors, and asteroids. 
When the Earth, the Sun, or the Moon become unstable, other gravities pull some particles away, and new particles are brought in to replace them from other sources. According to Kordelewski, he spotted the dust clouds around a Lagrange point of the Earth-Moon gravitational system known as L5. The Earth and the Moon have a Lagrange point, which is a point in space where the gravitational forces of the two astronomical objects cancel each other out. Lagrange points are a common location for a wide variety of other astronomical objects. For example, the Sun-Earth gravitational system's Lagrange points and the Sun-Jupiter system's Lagrange points contain minor planets. It is also suited for parking satellites and other space vehicles because fuel consumption is significantly reduced at these locations. Using them as transfer points for long-distance trips to other planets and possibly the Sun will be critical to future space research efforts. Any two-body system, including the Earth-Moon connection, has five or more such stable points. The Lagrange points are used for a variety of space operations. The James Webb Space Telescope, which was launched in 2021, is located in this area. The interplanetary superhighway proposed by NASA and other agencies would employ Lagrange points as transfer hubs for expeditions to Mars. The scientists' findings were published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society and reveal the team's success in snapping images of the enigmatic clouds that lie 250,000 miles distant, about as far away as the moon. The Polish astronomer Kazimierz Kordelewski, who had earlier speculated about the existence of numerous natural partners to Earth, left a gap that raised even more questions. People were skeptical about the presence of the moons, but it appears he was right. To confirm that our planet has dusty pseudo-satellites orbiting alongside its lunar neighbor is fascinating. The pyramid-shaped glow of the zodiacal light that emerges from dust spread between the orbits of the planets is similar to the light emitted by these particles. It is no secret that our solar system is littered with comets, meteors, and the zodiac. Observers with sharp eyes can observe clouds of tiny particles dispersed between the planets. These additional deep space dust structures are more stable than the Kordelewski clouds. The Lagrange Balancing Act traps dust particles in clouds, but minor tugs from Earth or the Moon allow them to escape. The dust clouds may have been in place since the Earth-Moon system formed, despite the fact that the particles themselves are very short-lived in astronomical terms. To put it another way, they're sort of like cosmic tumbleweed, and they could be important for future space exploration efforts. As far as space navigation safety is concerned, the examination of the dynamics of the Kordelewski clouds may very well wind up being very significant. In addition, if the assumptions of Horvath and Sills Balog are correct, there may be more of these wandering clouds of dust trailing the Earth, waiting to be detected at nearby Lagrange points. More satellites, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, might be put into orbit near Lagrange points, which would make observations that may help us better understand the space for safer space travel. However, even though Lagrange points 4 and 5 have been identified as having clouds, researchers believe that other Lagrange points have more clouds than we now realize. So is there a plan to learn more about the KDCs? Yes, there is a plan. A ground-based observation is the first step, since some global features of the KDCs, such as their location in space, can be determined from ground-based observations. This data will be used to direct the second element of the plan, which is an observation from space. Earth-Moon triangular libration points will be explored for the first time by the James Webb Space Telescope for more discoveries. These no-gravity points between Earth and the Moon will be explored and used to further broaden our space knowledge. Although the discovery of a few dust moons may not seem all that significant, it represents the culmination of half a century of astronomical and mathematical study and serves as a reminder that there are still mysteries to be unearthed in our universe. Despite the fact that you can never learn about these moons again, there is nothing wrong with marveling at the weird and fantastic things that we might uncover in the sky. And that is all for today's video, so are you excited or scared of the things that we might find in space if we continue our space exploration missions? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, go through the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.